Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalami. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. She is just an amazing she, uh, person. She has a marketing and branding company, and she also is an author. She recently published a book that she's going to tell you about, and it's an amazing book. And she has a lot of great intuitive advice and, and knowledge to help you and your business grow. And there are so many things that have changed over the course of the years. And she really wants to make people aware of how branding and digital marketing is done in today's society, because a, a, you know every single day things are changing. And if you want the best results, well, we have the person today that's going to show you how. So Beverly, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Well, I have been, as we were talking earlier, Stacey, thank you so much for having me here today. But, I, you know, over the years, I've been in the marketing industry <clears throat> 30, <laughs> almost 30 years. Uh, and I started off back, way back, I'm from Detroit, back in the car industry. I started off working for a corporate uh, Fortune 500 company, Chrysler, doing their advertising. And over the years, I've worked for tech companies and mom and pop companies and really have evolved. And then by accident, I started my own company back in 2011, and since then, I went from like a freelancer to a full-on boutique agency. We do branding, digital marketing, and we really we really focus on helping creative, purpose-driven entrepreneurs um, who are focused on positivity and wellness and making the world a better place, helping them grow, and really focus on the things that truly matter. And I'm at a point now where I get to help people that I love to help and, and make a difference. So it's been quite a journey, mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't give up any of it. Right. Uh, it was all important to where I am today. I love it. And you said you really like to help people in the holistic area and, yes. and wellness area. Yes. Now, where did that passion come from? So I actually, I wanted to be an ambassador at a, uh, at like in Brazil or something. I wanted to be like a, a diplomat when I was growing up. That was like my first, when I was going to college and I had to change, change disciplines. Cause I actually got really, really sick and had to come home from college. And so the, the college near my house didn't have an international relations program. So they said, well, I could go become a lawyer. And mm, I didn't want to ever become a lawyer. I felt like I would have to give up some of my ethics for that and maybe even right. like defend somebody who did something really wrong. And I just wasn't sure that was for me. And so when there was another opportunity to choose my path, I chose communications because it's the blending of anthropology and sociology and psychology and English. But this concept of helping people who are in the wellness space really probably was informed by my mother. She is a nurse. She's retired now, but she's also a bit of a hippie and believed in things like Reiki healing and oils and homeopathics and making sure that you ate well. And all these things kind of, um, as I grew up, were in my head all the time. And yeah. so as I started encountering businesses as a freelancer, people who were in that space were kind of, it was kind of new at the time. I mean, it's old, yeah. don't get me wrong. It's like 5,000 years old, but <laughs> it was the new thing. And yeah, yeah. Um, they, I just resonated really strongly with them. And I feel like they have the power to really affect people's lives. You know, right. if you're in pain and you go to a chiropractor and after four sessions, you don't have pain anymore and you can run with your kids. That's a pretty powerful transformation. Yeah. If you're an art therapist and somebody is dealing with trauma and they can't talk about it, like PTSD right. or whatever, they can't talk about it because it's just too hard. But through art, they can get past some of that pain and live a yeah. more fulfilling life. It's a huge transformation. And I want to be working with people who serve others like that. Uh, wow. I think that that is a huge mission and it just speaks to me. And I think what ends up happening is entrepreneurs who are in those spaces they have such a strong passion and purpose and they should just be doing that they shouldn't necessarily have to worry about how to market their services or how to do all, all the other things like we need more people like that doing good in the world so let's take off some of that that other stuff that, that they aren't necessarily good at so that they right. can really focus on healing people and helping people and making the world a more positive kind joyful place for us all to live in right 
I love it. I love it. You know, I, I am so into wellness and natural healing and, and I actually devoted my entire life to that. And I, I feel like it's so beneficial because people really need to see the better side, you know, and, and, you know, there's so much such competition in today's society when it comes to the health and wellness field that people who can make a difference really need to shine you know and that's where branding and digital marketing comes in as we were talking before you know we were joking around about like when we went to school and <laughs> when we were, when we were growing up and doing marketing ourselves you know how how everything has changed and it's like it's like black and white it's like completely different so it's like you know explain to people because like you know I was telling you about this like I come across so many clients and and they're still doing things like they did two decades ago and they're saying I don't understand why I'm not growing I don't understand why I'm not bringing in a lot of new clients and but they're doing things like from back in the day you know maybe you can clarify and, and explain to people the difference between back then and 30 years ago <laughs> 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 and how it is now and, and the changes, the major changes that occurred. And if you really want to stay on top and you want your brand to shine, you know, there are certain changes that need to be made. And maybe you can clarify some of those changes today. Stacey, when I started working at, at Chrysler, we, you know, these they had huge budgets. We had so many people and what we had access to was amazing to be able to get the word out and the brand out and build the sales and all that for that brand. And it was super exciting. I worked on the Dodge account and we did the whole Dodge different campaign. And it was really before Apple's different campaign. Like it was very cool to be on, on some of those kinds of campaigns. Yeah. But what was happening at that time is that if only those companies could afford to advertise yeah. at that level. And now so many years later, there's it's just been equalized. The access to tools, the access to the really hyper-targeted type of advertising where you can target to the type of animal they have to the to the exact zip code that they're in to what kind of uh, revenue or income they have uh, has really equalized things but what I see a lot of of service providers typically is they have outdated websites that they haven't touched and just like the human body and just like our wellness and our healing it's it completely alive and organic and a website and your marketing and your brand, are very alive and organic. And if you don't give it a little bit of love mm -hmm. consistently, it can feel very dated and, yeah. it, and it, it won't resonate anymore. And I right. think that's what's happened. They, they're so busy with, their, with the work that they're doing, their passion, their purpose. They're not mm -hmm. giving it love. They might put out a social media post. So they're like, I'm on LinkedIn or I'm on Facebook or I'm on Instagram or I'm on TikTok, which is amazing. But there's no strategy. It's not cohesive. It's just, oh, I should do it because everybody else is doing it. Or right. um, I have this one idea, so I'll put that out there. But there's not like the follow up to the idea. And right. if, to do something really well, you should have a really strong approach, a strategy, a plan that's consistent all around your entire brand. And, yes. and that way it resonates stronger with your actual target market. The other thing I see a lot of service providers doing is not niching. They think yeah. that they have to be everything to everyone. Yes. And now you don't have to be. You can yeah. really be specific. So, for example, if you're like a yoga studio, you could like focus on neonatal yoga, like pre pregnant women who do yoga. And you could really focus on that. Or if you are... Um, a chiropractor, maybe you could focus on busy executives and really structure your day based on busy executive schedules and yeah. really target your message to that particular client. And yeah. I think when we start talking in those terms and, and you start sharing content in that realm of like your story, your passion, and how you help that specific target market, the yeah. messaging and the branding and the marketing become really easy. So clarity of who you serve and what you do and focus, I feel like is maybe the new superpowers of marketing <laughs> and then mm -hmm. being really authentic. Everyone's been talking about authentic authenticity for a while. It's kind of an overused term, I feel like, but really just sharing your story and, and being you and doing the things that you love to do. The thing about owning a business, Stacey, is you can create whatever kind of business you want. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I had, I, I had to learn that the hard way because I was an accidental entrepreneur. 
Mm -hmm. I started a business because my husband's in the active duty, his active duty military. And I needed to have a, a career that was just as mobile as his and could go <laughs> anywhere. So I started as a freelancer and then mm -hmm. I ended up having an agency, a full-on agency. But what was the difference between freelancer and agency was freelancer. I took any job, any client, did anything, yeah. anything they mm -hmm. asked. Yeah. And then I was really stressed and overworked and, and not in my wheelhouse and having to figure things out. And I was, mm -hmm. our, we were stretched thin on resources. I was making money. I was successful. I was getting referrals, but I was not happy. Yeah. So here I had the American dream, but I had, but my clients had created a business that wasn't really mine. Yeah. And I think the shift needs to be, what is the business that I want to create who do I really want to serve? What problem yeah. do I truly solve? And how yeah. am I most positioned to help them solve that? And right. getting super clear and focused in that. And then just sharing your story and why and your passion and your purpose and being you. And it, it all kind of clicks and comes together. And then it gets really exciting. So when the agency happened, I got really clear and got really focused yeah. And I decided this is the business I want to run. This is the right. impact I want to have. These are the yeah. people I want to work with. Right. And I, I don't think I realized I could choose. Like I could pick the people that I, I mean, I kind of knew, right. like, I kind of knew like if a jerk came along, I didn't have to work with them, yeah. but I also didn't have to necessarily work with people who didn't have the vision that I had for right. how I want to make a difference in the world and things like that. So I think- you can, you are the, you are, you are the captain of your own ship and yeah. either you let everybody else drive it or you decide to drive it and get really clear. And that's, I think where we really help. Um, that's process. I kind of joke that I'm a marketing therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will dig into what, where you've been, where you are now, where you want to go, what's in your way and what resources you need and help guide you to a path that's way easier, way more fun. I, I say simple, not in the sense of um, it's not the right tool or tactic, but simple in the, in, the, in the sense of like, there's a clear path for you. And yeah. that, that creates much less noise for you as a business owner, when you know exactly who you are, who you serve and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, of business owners and myself, I'm guilty of this, struggle with things like being very alone in decision making they struggle with am I good enough they struggle with imposter syndrome they struggle with fear of success fear of failure I mean there's like so much mindset stuff in there too yeah. and just having somebody as a partner to help light that path and say you're you got a great business model you can totally do this you, yeah. you, you are magical and right. you need to share it with people yeah. is really empowering for our clients. And I mean, I joke, you know, I'm working here, but I'm also a cheerleader. I'm also, <laughs> somebody calls me their fairy godmother, you know, like I, I, I really want people to succeed and do what yeah. makes them happy. And, you know, I, I call it spark and ignite because it's like the, the things in life that spark our passions and ignite yeah. our excitement. That's what's really important. We need yeah. more joy, more of that in our, in our life. And uh, I really want to help people do more of that. And it really comes down to clarity and focus on your why, your purpose, your passion, looking at your mission and your vision, who you are from a core value perspective. Um, mm -hmm. And like, what credentials do you have? Like, what, how are you here to help people? What have, what have you d done all the education for? Who else have you helped successfully in sharing yeah. those stories uh, in the process to help build credibility and authority? But right. I, I, this is stuff that I could talk about forever, Stacey. So <laughs> Yes, this is this is this this is where I think uh, it's important. When we help a small business owner who does these really cool things that help people, there's this ripple effect in their community, right? People are healthier, happier, kinder, more joyful, uh, and then their family 
is affected and then they're maybe they have a business and their team is affected and right. then there's that the community effectiveness where where if you are successful as a business you're donating to causes that matter and then like it just becomes its own revolution kind of in a community yeah. and uh-huh. i i am so on board for that i am all about it i am i am there i am here for it and i want to encourage it and i want more people to find their passions and do what they love and believe in and help people. Right. Oh, I love it. I love it. And, you know, I think so, you know, storytelling is very important. A lot of people don't share their story enough. You know, so, you know, everybody's gone into their business for a reason. It's, you know, yes. most of the time, you know, there is a, a really super story behind the reason why they're doing what they're doing. And, you know, if people hear the, their stories, you know, even if they hear one phrase or a couple mm-hmm. words, that can resonate with them, you know, right then and there, you, you've drawn in someone that could be a potential client that really admires what you're doing, why you're doing it. And they're like, wow, you know, this person really wants to help this Mm -hmm. person really wants to make something better in my life, you know, you know, happen. And, you know, so they're more drawn, but, you know, sometimes I see a lot of people are afraid to share their story. You know, they, they're hesitant and they're very, very bland when it comes to their bio, when it says about you know, this person, you know, they just say the basics and maybe where they came from and what school they graduated. But, you know, I think people want to hear the story behind it also. I think that's mm-hmm. what really ties people and really makes people like really want to learn more about that either company or that person behind the scenes. You are completely right, Stacey. I think people think, I, I believe people are afraid to be a little vulnerable Mm -hmm. and put themselves out there for fear of rejection or maybe you know social media isn't always kind there's these people who lurk in their basements and say nasty things and whatever yeah but Mm -hmm. you 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 can't live your life based on them you have to live it with uh, what is authentically you and you know my first videos were not perfect and my first podcasts were not perfect and my first book is not perfect Mm -hmm. but you know what I'm out here living my life yeah. And I'm doing yeah. the things and I'm trying and I'm learning and I am, I'm making myself better and I, I'm doing it. And I think right. sometimes it's just a matter of that one little first step, that one little thing. I recently shared a story about, uh, so my mom was adopted. I am adopted and my son is adopted, mm-hmm. which is a very unique thing. Three generations of adoption. Yeah. And it's all very different. One was taken, one was chosen, and one was given. It's just a very mm-hmm. interesting thing. And I shared it on a podcast not related to business. Yeah. And it was it's part of my journey. It certainly informs who I am because I think you can you create your family and love is not based on blood. It's it can be a contributing yeah. factor for sure. But you get to choose the people you want in your life. You get to choose your destiny in this life. You get to choose how you live in this life. And it certainly has informed how I am as a boss, how I am with my clients, how I am as a mom, how I am as as a wife. And um, I shared the story and my... Many people have said it's like a soap opera. It's like unbelievable. The story is very unbelievable, but it's very, very true. And my, one of my team members said, Beverly, you should share that on our social. And I said, I don't know if people really want to know. It's kind of like a vulnerable thing. It gets very personal. And she said, (laughs) it really, it really shows who you are, the kind of person you are, how you love, how you, like how you view the world and how it could have been really ugly but you decided that wasn't going to be the case and how you kind of changed your narrative entirely and, and what that means to you. And it really informs like like a base part of who you are. And I said, it does. So she convinced me and, you know, it had been a client. I'm like, Oh yeah, you got to show You got to share that. You got to share that. But she convinced me to put it on my bio. And, um, it's interesting how many people have come forward and said, oh, I'm adopted as well. Or like there is a connection that has happened because yeah, yeah. of that story. So, or we've adopted or like, it's just, it's interesting how many people have adoption somehow attached to their life in some way, in some way. So I guess any way you can I, to connect is is true, but there yeah. are elements of our lives that we hold maybe to be more sacred or like in this case, it's not just my story. It's also my mother's story and my son's story. And I don't want to um, take their story from them. 
it's their mm-hmm. story. So I'm mm-hmm. really respectful of that. And so I wanted to make sure it was okay with all the people involved and all the things, but it, it is, uh, it's, it's, it's somebody told me it was like a Dickens story. It's like something that you don't, you just don't, you don't uh, hear every day. So, yeah. but, it, but it, I think it is. So you have to be vulnerable and you have to be willing to take some risks and you have to, for me, that process was actually about speaking my truth for the first time out loud. Yeah. In a way that I had never talked about it before. Right. So I, I, people had heard bits and pieces of the story or whatever, but this was a complete kind of narrative of the situation. And it was yeah. the first time, and I had to feel comfortable in that mm-hmm. to talk about it further, right? So you do have to do it in the terms that you feel comfortable with. So I had written about it many times. Yeah. I had talked about it in several different ways, but to kind of put it in a whole story itself, which now may be another book. <laughs> um <laughs> is another is a whole nother level and you have to decide what you feel comfortable with but I will tell you that the more human you are and the more you share how you kind of became the person that you are yeah people will connect and even like the 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 adoption story like I want to I want to know about it like it it does create some connection and curiosity and people are uh we we love stories people love stories people yeah. love stories of challenges of overcoming challenges of inspiration of making mistakes of all the things every good story every successful person you know you talk about michael jordan or oprah winfrey or whoever yeah. starts with i did this thing and i really sucked at it or you know how many shots i didn't make yeah and then you get to see like what makes that person. So your mistakes are just as important as as the things that you've done well in this yes. life. Because it, it tells us that you've lived and you've learned and you've grown and you're wiser and smarter and, and more interesting as a human when you've yeah. done that. So you can be fallible. It's perfectly okay. The way you do it might be a little bit, you might want to think about it. But other than yeah. that, I think... Again, I've just found my voice through my podcast. I, I interview tons of entrepreneurs and hear their stories of struggle, of challenges, of their sparks, what started the, yeah. the, the business of like, I always ask them the biggest marketing mistake they've ever made. And I want to hear like what it was. And they always say, oh, I le- but I learned so much because now I do this, this and this. So uh, those stories are amazing. And I always end the conversation and I probably will do the same today, Stacey. When I meet other people and talk to them and and share with them, I'm always truly inspired and so glad for the connection. So right. it's it's never disappointing <laughs> in that. Uh, but yeah, sharing your story, it, there's the benefits far outweigh the occasional troll <laughs> who's just miserable anyway. And you know, send him some <laughs> grace and 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 move along. You know, who cares? Very who cares? true. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. Who cares? And, you know, and I think what you said before, too, is is that, you know, people, you know, fear failure. And it's like, you know, like even like when it comes to podcasting, most people don't make it past show number eight. Yeah. You know, it's like people have to really understand that they will be mistakes along the way. And that's mm-hmm. how we learn. And, you know, I look back at my work when, you know, decades ago when I first started and I look at myself, how I write and how I do things now. And I'm like, wow you yes. know it's like you yes. know you learn and you excel and you grow as time goes on and you know people have to give themselves a chance I feel yes. like I feel like people you know they they look for instant gratification instant results and mm-hmm. that's just not the way reality works you know maybe you can elaborate on that well it doesn't work that way we are alive and organic and living and breathing and and experiencing life. And, you know, I, one of my friends, um, she recently uh, had some, some hard things happen to her. And I said, Oh, this is so exciting. And she was like, what? I said, (laughs) you're now far more interesting than you were before all these things happened. And she was like, you know, I never really thought about it that way. I said, you're living life. That means you're taking chances. That means you're trying love. That means right. you're, you know, like all these things and gosh, yeah. wouldn't you be so much happier if you tried it versus never trying it. And now you know yeah. what it feels like, and now you know what you don't want. So now you're more informed for the next relationship you have. And, 
And I said, oh, this is so exciting. It's like, you're in your own era now, like live it and love it and be like really excited about it. And she, and I sent her um, a Spotify playlist and she was like, you sent me like a mixtape. I said, I did because this is time for you. That's how I feel about with all my clients. It's your time. You can live in your little bubble. You can, you can do the things the way you've always done them still struggle, be confused, be overwhelmed, all the things. You can live in that bubble, do your thing, and that's fine. Or you can have a little bump out of the bubble and do something different. Share a story, maybe Mm -hmm. get more clear and focused. But once you make the bump out of the bubble, you can never go back to the small bubble. So you're just constantly making your bubble bigger and bigger. And gosh, I don't want to live here. I want to live like... (laughs) Like, yes. hold on, I can't reach it. Hold on, here is where I want to live. And if I can live in that space and I can help other people live and and, and live in their space, mm-hmm. and then I feel like my legacy is really, really cool. And I have I have made the world better in some way, shape. Yes. And so for me and my team, we all have written our eulogies. Mm-hmm. It's one of our our things that we do with every team member is write our eulogies and work ourselves backwards. And so we live very intentionally. And we also, when we, who we work with is very intentional and the work that they do should be intentional. And so we really work with entrepreneurs to help them be more intentional in the life and the business they want for themselves, the vision they have, the legacy that they want to leave. And that is really where I feel like at the end of the day, at the end of my life, When I look back at the things that I've accomplished or the things that I've done, I know I will have impacted the world. And I feel like if more people can have impact like that and we can, that, I mean, maybe I'm a little, a little optimistic and a little altruistic and a little, maybe just a little naive. Um, But I really do believe that we have a choice in the life we lead. And, you know, it's so noisy right now. There's so many channels. There's so many tools. There's so much going on in the world. Um, but there's really good stuff happening too. And I'm, yeah. I want to be part of that conversation. Yeah. And I want to be part of that magic. And that's where I get to sit and breathe and live and um, propel uh, yes. people forward and I do that with my team. I do that with my clients. I do that with my family. We all believe in that we, my husband serves, obviously he's in the military. We live a life of service. And how do we serve this, this world that we live in? And um, we do it very intentionally and in how we can help people around us, but also bring us joy in the process too. Yeah. Not that that's, um, um, I had a whole conversation about this recently about like, I'm serving. I get to kind of choose how I serve. Yeah. And they were like, well, is that really serving them? I was like, I think so. Like, I feel like I get to, I know that I will live in a better space and in a better place if I'm serving where it resonates with me versus what everybody else decides. And I feel like uh, I can still have great benefit in that area. So, um, but I don't think everybody thinks that you get to decide. And that's where I said the intentionality and creating this life that you want, looking at the vision and the legacy and your why, and then how to make that happen. We really focus on those unique opportunities that exist in the, in the, in between of that, where you've been, where you are and where you want to go. We look at those unique opportunities for you and your business. And so many people have said like, gosh, like I'm so much more excited about my business now. And like, that's how I felt when I decided, when I, when I made the transition from freelancer to a boutique right. agency and started yeah. to be really intentional. Now I get up at 3 a.m. I'm excited to go do the thing I need to do because I'm so inspired to write that blog post or to yeah. write that episode of the podcast or yeah. to write the book in seven days, whatever the case is. I I am excited to do that. It doesn't feel like, you know, you hear this thing like don't, it's not work if you're really supposed to, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, it's still right. work. Don't get me wrong. Like I still have a lot of work. Yeah. I have a long list of to do's. I'm a, I'm a checklist junkie. So I have a <laughs> long list of to do's here, but, it, and there's things that on there that aren't really my favorite things. Like I really would never want to, to do bookkeeping ever if I don't have to, but I have amazing people who do that for me. And I love yes. looking at my, my, my profitability and some like that stuff. Like I, I like looking at that stuff, but yeah. I like that somebody else figures that out for me. Right. supposed to myself because it's Baby. kind of soul sucking <laughs> to this creative soul but yeah. um yeah I just feel like more intentional more 
anybody who's listening, if you're at a point in your life that you like, my business is just, it's not making me happy anymore. Like it's time for you to decide how to make it make you happy and what that looks like. And you don't have to wait any longer. Right. You don't. It, it, you can you can make changes now that have really strong effects um, fairly quickly in clarity and focus. And it can change your entire outlook and the potentiality of your business. Because once you're happy and you're vibing and you're in that place, gosh, watch out world. Like yes. you're unstoppable, which is amazing. Uh, yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now tell me about this book. I want to hear more <laughs> about the book you just launched. So, um, my husband was, uh, away on business. He was, he was doing some work with the military and he was away on business for a, like 10 days. And I don't know if anybody else is like me, but you know, I, when my husband's away, I spend a lot more time on myself and what I want to do and things like that. Right. So I, what am my comfort zone? So I'm in the circle too, but my circle might be now like, like this, right. Yeah, was yeah. I wanted to write a book forever. But I thought, yeah. oh, it's too hard. And what if it's not perfect? And, you know, I'm a recovering perfectionist. So it's like, I have to like put everything into it and put my soul into it. It has to be perfect. Yeah. And I made myself a promise. I kind of like dared myself, I guess. And I do this all the time to myself. Can you write a book in seven days? Your husband's gone for 10. Can you do it in seven days? Mm -hmm. well, it's worth a try. And sure yeah. enough, I found like a system and I wrote the book in seven days. Now it's, it's a book you can read in 60 to 90 days. It's called marketing for entrepreneurs, the quick guide to spark and ignite your marketing. I love it. It's 90, 90 minutes. And if you fill out every single action step, it might take you two hours, but mm -hmm. I wanted it to be something you could read at lunch or maybe like on a Saturday morning before you had to do something or a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I was very specific about that. I wanted something that was like super easy to digest because I think sometimes as business owners, we don't have a lot of time, but we yes. want to learn and we're just, we need like more of those bite-sized things. So yeah. I said, let's make it quick, get out some of the fluff. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love fluff. So it's really hard. <laughs> I love the magic and the fluff. Um, get out some of the fluff and then just how do we help our clients? And I literally put in the book what I asked myself. But right. I went from freelancer to boutique agency with mm -hmm. intention of who I right. want to serve, how I want to serve. I, all the questions that I asked myself, I put in the book yeah. and it talks about what's your why and what's your purpose and what makes you happy. And like looking at all the areas of your marketing and how do you infuse that with this, this, and this, and it's auditing your business in a way yeah. and, and even who you are in a way um, that's just really going to make you think and be thoughtful about your intention with your business. Right. So lots of action steps. Every chapter has, I think like five to seven ac action steps where you can fill it out. So I'm working on a second, the ultimate guide that's uh -huh. going to have like a workbook that it's going to have a little bit right. more, a space for you to be thoughtful and um, some additional tips and tricks and things like that, that I've learned along the way, as well as some case studies from some of the people I've interviewed of people yeah. what they've done and things like that. So there'll be more stories in it next time. So it will probably take much, much longer, but I mm -hmm. feel like from the feedback I've gotten is like, this is great, but I want more. So that's good. You want them to have yeah. more. Um, but it is, it's the perfect for just, if you have a couple hours, sit down, be reflective, answer yeah. some questions, be real with yourself. You got answers. Like this is where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. And then from there, decide where you want to go, like where you, where you want to take your business and be yeah. really intentional about where you want to go and craft the life that you deserve and the business that you were meant to lead. Yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? So we have three main services. Now we do a lot of things in those services, but the very first one is called the Brand Spark. Are you getting like a theme? <laughs> the Brand Spark. <laughs> and that is the 90 minute deep dive where I'm the marketing therapist, where we go, we go deep. And I mean, I've had people cry on the calls. It's 
people are really vulnerable. They trust me. It's great. Like I, I want them to feel heard. I want to hear it all, the good, the bad, the ugly. I want to hear it all. What frustrates you about your industry? What, what makes you super excited about your industry? Who are your favorite customers? Like, I want to hear all the things, yeah. How, why you got here. Why did you start it? Like, wh where do you see your business? Like, I want to see all the things in there. And then from there, I create a blueprint. And that's mm -hmm. where I share where I think you have four to six very unique opportunities based on you specifically, your business, who you are, who you serve that can make your business truly unique right. and authentic to who you are. And then if they decide that they want to use us to help implement some of those things, we have a brand yeah. ignite service again, another you know theme uh -huh. um, that will a very intensely create all the foundational stuff based on this new information, help them with their branding, their messaging, their content, their website, and get them up and running yeah. in two, typically two business days. Oh, I love it. I so love we do it. a lot of work before those two business days, but essentially after two days of working with us, you have a brand, you have a logo, you have messaging and you have a website and you're ready to rock and roll. I no one it. wants to wait six months to get this thing off the road. Yes. Now you're excited. Now you want to make things happen. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. So that's the Ignite. We've lit a fire. Now we're growing, right? So the yeah. last service that we have is called Blaze, Brand Blaze. And that's like the ongoing daily, weekly, monthly activities. So your social media postings, your email marketing, things like that. So we have those three key services and we, on we only start with a brand spark. We, we won't go to a brand Ignite or a brand blade or until we've done that previous work. Cause that lets us know who you are. It helps us get into your head, helps us find your voice. Like we, it's a pretty intimate moment that we have with the client and that helps us really inform the rest of the entire process. So, and that is my favorite part. And that's the part that I'm really intentional about. I love spending that time with the entrepreneur. I love creating the blueprint. I love seeing their, how, we talk about how do they feel when they read it and they love it. And it's just, it's, it's, it's magical. And I love creating magic and to yeah. see the, the spark of, of joy again, to see the excitement, to see that they can that they can see their vision played out is yes. that there's something really empowering in that process and they can see like anything's possible and i think yeah. that is that's something that everybody needs to believe in themselves so oh, yeah. That's that's pretty the much the services we do a lot of things in, in there and we have systems and frameworks and all of that for the process but I could list all day long all the things we could do. But that's the the key things that we do. And like I said, we work mostly with the creative, purpose driven people who are in the positivity and wellness space, yeah. making huge impacts and wanting to change the world and help people just live a better, healthier life. I love it. Now, from today's conversation, if you had to emphasize on some important points that you really thought would really impact the listeners, what are some things you'd like to emphasize? Don't forget who you are. Don't forget where you started. Don't forget why you started your business. Because right. in the beginning, do you remember that moment that was like, oh, I can do this and yeah. I'm going to try this. And like, that's that moment, that spark is so important because that's what fuels everything else along the way. And if you forget that because you're so busy with your head down, doing the operations, doing the HR, doing, now I know it's hard, like despite the sparks and ignition and blaze, you still got to do all the stuff, right? But yeah. we're here to help simplify the marketing side of it. If you can find the yeah. same, we happen to know an accounting firm who does the same thing for um, their books. Like we work with some other, other operational type businesses that are very similar to ours in that mindset and in the framework that we work with. Um, yeah. But really it's remember your why, remember your purpose and your passion and remind yourself of that story. Even if just today, after this podcast, go write down your story. Yeah. What, why, why did I start this business? Or if you're thinking about starting a business, why do you want to start the business? Yeah. And really why, and what, what problem do you see that you're fulfilling and who do you want to serve in that? And then when you look at how you can be the guide and you can help the customer who we call mm -hmm. the hero of their yeah. story, of their journey, 
when you can help the customer be the hero of their own journey, whatever that looks like for your particular business, and yeah. you really focus on that, we're customer obsessed. Like yeah. that's really what it comes down to. But if you write down your story and, and put those things in perspective, that needs to drive. That's the filter for every decision. Yes. For your business and the future of your business. Remind yourself of your why mm -hmm. and your purpose and who you serve. And I think you'll, you'll find that you won't be as distracted. So mm -hmm. many entrepreneurs are builders and they want to yep. build things, but we also are a little bit squirrely, like, oh, squirrel, oh, squirrel, oh, squirrel. And I think if you keep this purpose, this thing right in front of you, mm -hmm. nothing can get in your way, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good to have sparks. It's good to grow. It's good as long as it's feeding the why and the purpose and yes. who you serve that, that it becomes the decision-making filter for everything, even hiring somebody or whatever. If it, if it matches that, then you know, you're making a good decision. Right. And I feel like more people need to remember that part versus like, yeah. oh, I made this much money this year. Well, I know it's important, but I know if you focus on this, that other part will come. I promise you. Yeah. I promise oh, yeah. you. Most of the business, I'm not going to say most, all of the business owners that we have worked with, the ones yeah. that are focused mm -hmm. are the most successful. Right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. This is you, you, you were like, you were just a bowl of information today. I am so glad you came on the show. Uh, you know, you are totally an inspiration. Oh, and thank you. you. Oh, you're welcome. You know, you, you, you followed your heart. And you really, you know, you stood focused, you, you were determined to succeed and you believed in yourself and, you know, those things like drove you to where you are today, you know, and you've made huge accomplishments. And I really like to commend you on, on that. You, you're a great person and, and yeah. your intentions are all there. And I love how you focus on people, you know, trying to help people who are in the health industry and wellness industry mm -hmm. and trying to make a difference so those people could help others and, and get their name out there. So, yeah, you're, you're amazing. I thank yeah. you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me and letting me share. <laughs> Oh, you're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. And I hope to see you back soon. I hope we stay connected for sure. <laughs> yes, 100%. You have a great day. Thank you.